Welcome back to another episode of What's Going On right here only on RETV. Make sure you subscribe, share the video, and you can still find us on Roku or download that app on iOS or Android. So this week, we're going to get into The Little Mermaid, okay? Everybody knows that Haley Berry, uh, one of the twins, I, I like to call them the singing twins, um, because if you remember, like, they were, they've been singing since they were little. But Haley Berry was the star of the newly released Little Mermaid. And we're gonna take a look and see what happened in the box office. Okay, so I've already seen like 211 million, but for most of the articles that I read, it looks like it um, closed at, it looks like it was hitting at least 100 million. So let's take a look at this article really quick. Okay, check out what the headlines say over on the Creo. It says The Little Mermaid makes box office splash with 95.5 million dollar opening. Okay, so that was on Monday of this week that they said that it's probably a lot higher now. I've seen a lot of different um, posts of all of my friends going to take their kids and grandkids and things like that. People were dressing up like mermaids. But it says Disney's live action remake of his 1989. Oh my goodness, 89. Guys, how old? Comment in the chat below and let me know how old you were in 1989, all right? Um, but Disney's live action remake of his 1989 animated classic easily outswam the competition, bringing in 95.5 million on 4,320 screens in North America, according to the estimates they had on Sunday. And Disney estimates the film starring Halle Berry at, I'm sorry, I want to say Halle Berry. And Disney estimates the film starring Halle Bailey as the titular mermaid Ariel and Melissa McCarthy as her sea witch nemesis Ursula will reach 117.5 million by the time the holiday is over. It ranks as the fifth biggest Memorial Day weekend opening ever, okay? Performance of The Little Mermaid represents something of a bounce back for Disney's animated to live action remakes and makes it likely they will keep coming indefinitely. Poor reception and the pandemic has some recent reboots either performing poorly or skipping theatrical releases for Disney Plus, including Dumbo, Milan, and Pinocchio. So something interesting about this is um, she really wanted to keep her locks for this, uh, for this movie. And so looking on yahoo.com, there was an article that says that Haley Bailey reveals why it was so important for her to keep her locks in The Little Mermaid. Cause you know, they gotta change their looks up sometimes for movies. Haley Bailey as Ariel in The Little Mermaid was a big win for little black girls all over the world. But the fact that she was able to keep her natural locks with no refuse sends even more of a message to black women and girls to show up in all spaces as their most authentic selves. In an interview with Ebony, she revealed how important it was for her to keep her hair in its natural state for the film's remake. In the movie, Haley keeps the signature red hair that Ariel was known for, but went for a copper red color instead. She says, I was grateful to the director, Rob Marshall, because he wanted me to keep my locks. It's always important to have somebody to co-sign, Haley told Ebony. Haley went on to say that she wanted to keep Ariel's red hair because that's an integral part of her character, but she admired the fact that she is a black woman with locks and wanted to bring that part of herself into Ariel's look. I'll make sure to drop this uh, link in the description below so that you can read up on their article, but have you seen The Little Mermaid? I have not seen it yet, so I'm skipping over everybody's uh, reviews and things like that because I don't want any spoilers even though I already know what happened to The Mermaid, but um, <laughs> comment down below if you went to go see the movie. So this next one is a feel-good story about somebody who's overcome triumph, okay? So we're gonna take a little look at an article that was on Good Morning America. Um, this person is also a DMV native. And for those of you who watch this show on a regular basis, you already know I am in the DMV, okay? Um, but take a look at this article. DMV native Rehan Staten was among more than 700 graduates who walked the stage at the 2023 Harvard Law School commencement ceremony this past Thursday. Okay, tens of thousands of people graduate law school each year with unique experiences and Staten is no different. While he has many good memories, he said his journey to success has been a steep uphill battle since he was in elementary school. He had a pretty interesting story growing up. Uh, in this article, he tells about how he lived and how his father worked all the time and his mother uh, had to leave the home 
but his living and financial situation adversely affected his educational experience. And according to him, the teachers he had growing up didn't make the situation any better. Staten recalls attempts to put him in special education classes and a teacher comparing his brain to a gym cabinet, alluding to his supposed lack of intelligence, which Staten said made him discouraged. What in the world? People say some crazy things, um, you know, that's, that's unfortunate, but I bet you that person is looking crazy right now because uh, he turned he turned his situation completely around and graduated from Harvard Law School, okay? I'm gonna put this link in the description below so you can read all about his story. These stories are always good because you never know who's watching and you never know who can relate to these things. And sometimes when you've been through a lot, you start to think that maybe you aren't going to be able to do certain things and he definitely showed us okay so definitely take a look at that article let us know what you think okay now it is time for the entrepreneur of the week and this week's entrepreneur is the rad black kids okay this is a clothing company really i see a lot of shoes on this site but i do know they have apparel as well now the interesting thing about this company called the rad black kids is that their, as you can see in their bio, their clothing is carbon neutral luxury. And if you wanna know what carbon neutral means, it's basically, um, it basically means that it, there's a balance between the carbon that's emitted and the carbon that's absorbed from the atmosphere, um, you know, in the process of making these uh, shoes and clothing in the process of making this apparel. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and um, we're already following them. You definitely want to take a look at this because it's black owned. Would you rock any of these? Okay. This is, this is amazing. Um, we're gonna go ahead and see if we can check out a little bit more of their apparel. Let's just see what they have. So they have some sunglasses. They have luxury sneakers. Let's take a look at the luxury sneakers. And you will get a coupon, 25% off by signing up when you um, get onto the site. But here are some of the things that they offer. They have some low top sneakers. They have some uh, boots. Keep in mind, these are all luxury items, okay? They have a little bit of everything on here. Okay, so definitely click around and check out their site. Let's take a look at their best sellers. Their best sellers are here. Okay, so they do have some socks as well. How much are those socks? $15. I thought they said $150. <laughs> they have skateboards. They have hunting pants. The Rat Black Kids are quintessentially all of us that don't feel represented by the monolithic views that we are painted over with a broad brush. The need for this brand grew out of a desire from the founder to see faces that reflect his in action sports. He began through building long boards simply because he couldn't afford one. So his background in architecture made this possible. The Rad Black Kids initially began building long boards with riders in mind utilizing the best rider oriented boards. Using Rider's Choice trucks, wheels, bearings, and true rider quality decks, in 2008, after spending five winters snowboarding, most weekends in the winter, summer was a chore as there was nothing to do in his small Idaho town. He didn't have the money to purchase the board, so instead he built a repurposed old board out of a 1996 somehow still rideable deck. Six years later, in 2014, when the opportunity arose, the Rad Black Kids was established. It was durable, weather-resistant, inspired by women's purses, long boards as the initial product offering. As time went by and long boards flew off the shelf, the Rad Black Kids took the same principles of quality, durability, and longevity and applied them to our first clothing collection in 2015. With each season, the goal of each collection was to create immersive storytelling experience. The founder felt as though the garments could tell stories from his home country of Zimbabwe and stories of Africans in the diaspora. 
each piece to be a soldier on this crusade of shattering monoliths. The Rad Black Kids has now evolved to a brand that is not only better at narrative-based product design, but now all of our products are now made in Portugal. Sustainability and reduction of carbon emissions are paramount to the Rad Black Kids. We've been planting a tree for every product we sell since our inception in 2014, but now, due to the catastrophic climate emergency, we now plant 20 trees for each product sold. Don't forget to follow them, and when you get over there, definitely let them know that you heard about them on RETV and your girl Demita Joe sent you. Okay, so now it's time for yay or nay. All right, this is my favorite part of the show. I mean, all of the parts is my favorite part of the show, but this one I really like because <laughs> sometimes I find really cool things, sometimes I find really funny things, sometimes I find things to make you think. So this week we're gonna start with um, who still eating? Who still eats McDonald's? Okay, I do. I do fall victim to the fries sometimes, but what I want to show you is uh, we know what the McDonald's look like here in the U.S. of A. But a lot of times, due to the location, different places may have may take on a different structure. Okay, and so today we're gonna take a look at a McDonald's in Rome, Italy. All right, check this out. This is the first McDonald's built in Italy, and it looks like a museum. Check it out. That's the inside. The food to me looks better. <laughs> I don't think that my lettuce has ever looked like that from anything I remember. They got french fries with bacon and cheese. They got wings. And they have a Parmesan stick. That's interesting. Like, are you supposed to eat the whole thing? So different areas have different things. But look at the inside of this McDonald's. They got statues. Definitely, definitely not like a, a McDonald's here in the States, okay? So the first McDonald's in Italy opened in Rome in the 1980s. The first restaurant took the spot of a prestigious bar right off the Spanish steps across from the Spanish embassy. Indeed, it was a drastic move. While McDonald's had ample experience moving into new markets, it was especially difficult. That is crazy. I mean, even the food looks uh, different to me. What do you think? Comment down below. Yay or nay, have you been to a McDonald's that was outside of the States and, and it looked drastically different than the ones that you go to here in the United States? So this next one is also something kind of cool because I've never seen a hotel like this that I can remember, but Arizona has built its first landscape hotel. What's a landscape hotel? Well, let's take a look. All right, check this out because... Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. So Arizona, Arizona, this is Arizona's first landscape hotel just opened in Sedona. So there's a shot of it. That's a nice backdrop. But check it out. It's comprised of 40 cube shaped guest atriums constructed using floor to ceiling glass. I definitely would like to stay in one of those. Okay, I really, really think that's interesting, okay? That's interesting to me. I like to stay in different places anyway. My yay or nay is, have you ever stayed in a landscape hotel and would you want to go to this one? Now, you know, Arizona is like the spot for spas. So they showed a little bit about how they have, you know, the food and the spa services and things like that. So that's definitely something that I would actually put on my list to go and check out. Yay or nay? Would you do it too? Okay, so the next yay or nay is also another uh, place that I would check out, okay? This next one is a business that is exists in a lot of places, but this one has a special attribute that will probably bring in people who aren't even coming there for that business. But what I wanna show you is this laundromat that has a bar in it, okay? And it's black owned, okay? A laundromat with a bar. Check out this tour of this laundromat with a bar. So, you know, they have nice big washing machines. Apparently, it doesn't cost too much to wash and dry your clothes. The person that did this video was um, only used $10 and was able to, she said it was more than enough. You get um, a laundry card when you go in there. 
And I mean, to be honest, like, you know, a lot of people have laundry services in their home, but um, when you go to a laundromat, you can wash everything at the same time. So it actually takes you a short amount of time. You just have to, you know, lug your clothes all the way to the laundromat. That's neither here or there because this laundromat would bring out different customers. As you can see, it's a nice clean facility. And here's the bar area. Look at all those people. And nobody in there washing their clothes. They got a bar, they got coffee, they got food it looks like. So this is definitely a great business idea. They just capitalized on two things by creating that business. Okay, so the laundromat is called Pearl Lee's Wash Tub. A place where the chore of laundry is eased with libation. This is their Instagram here. Pearl underscore Lee's underscore wash tub. And let's check out some of their pictures. So it looks like, like I said, they have food. The food don't look half bad either. They got drinks. Okay. This is actually a really good idea. This is actually a really great idea. So definitely, definitely let me know. Would you go to this laundromat even if you had a washer and dryer in your home? Yeah, your name. Have you been? Yeah, your name. Was it in a good business idea? Yeah, your name. Anyway, put your comments down below. Let us know what you think. Share this video with somebody who think you would be inspired by these stories. Definitely don't forget to like and subscribe. And there's still time to download the app on iOS. I'm your girl, Demita Joe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey, it's your girl Tia Robertson. I'm the host of Entrepreneur Insider. Right here on IETV every Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern for entrepreneurs and news that you need to know about. See you there. is Demita Joe. Each Wednesday, you can find me here at 3 p.m. I'll be over here discussing different things that are going on and try to bring you a boost of positivity for your week because we all need this. We're going to share some feel-good stories. We might find a hometown hero. We may take a look at some trending topics and sometimes we might even find a lesson in a not-so-warm and fuzzy story if we can. I'm Demita Joe, and I'll see you guys on the next episode right here on What's Going On?